Well, evidently, my life has once again pulled me away from this channel. It's not very cool, unfortunately, but it happens. I miss you guys, and I hope everyone's doing well. Thanks to all of you, we reached 1,000 subscribers on this channel, and I wanted to commemorate this occasion with a Q&A video. A few months back, I asked everyone on different platforms for some questions I could answer in this video, and now is finally the time to respond to them. So to everyone that posted questions back in July, thank you for your patience. And even if you didn't ask any questions, but you've been waiting for another upload from me, thank you for sticking around. There were a lot of good questions in here, and they gave me a chance to address some things I haven't got into yet on this channel. So hopefully there's something useful in here for everyone. I'll try to answer these questions to the best of my ability, and I'll leave timestamps for each one in the description of this video. There are also some questions that overlap, so I'll try to answer those together if I can. So to start off, I got a few questions about when I started drawing or for how long I've been studying, so I'll address those all at once. The earliest I can say I began drawing was maybe around the age of eight or nine. I'm sure I've been doing some amount of art before then, but that's the earliest I can remember spending a considerable amount of time drawing in my room or in class, uh, more so than most of my peers at least. So that's where it started for me. And that would mean I've been drawing for about 13 to 14 years now. As for when I started drawing digitally, I say I first delved into digital in 2014 using free apps on an Android tablet and then switched to using PC with a drawing tablet in 2016, which is the configuration I still use today. I also received a few questions about my YouTube journey and why I began doing this. I started uploading art videos on this channel two years ago in October uh, 2021, and there are a few reasons why I decided to give YouTube a try. Uh, a big reason I began creating art videos is that as I became more involved in creating art, I would discover countless things about myself and the art process that I wanted to spark a conversation about or share with others. And I felt that YouTube would be the perfect platform to do that on. Up until I started this channel, I would already monologue at length to myself about various topics. So I figured, why not just write these thoughts down and speak them into a microphone for everyone to hear and engage with. Uh, another factor that contributed to my decision to build a channel is the fact that I believe YouTube would be a great way to develop a community of individuals who have common interests, goals, and ideas. And lastly, I just want to be able to share what I do with those who might be interested, whether that be my process or workflow, plans and ideas, or whatever else the future holds in store. Ask it asked a few questions, and the first one is, what software did you start off on? I'll actually just give a timeline of the software I've used to answer this. Since I started digital art on an Android tablet, my first software was the free version of Autodesk Sketchbook. And to be honest, it wasn't great in my opinion, but it's what got me familiar with digital art basics like layers, opacity, brushes, and so forth. When I made the switch to PC, the first software I used was an older version of Paint Tool Sci. I enjoyed using it, especially because of how simple and lightweight it was, but it was too restricting for me and it didn't have a lot of features. So then I switched to MetaBang Paint Pro, which I still recommend to people as a pretty good free software that probably has everything you'd need to start digital art. Then after a couple of years of using that, I made the switch to Clip Studio Paint in 2018, and I've been using that ever since. Their next question is, do you ever get nervy sharing your artwork with other people? And if you ever did or do, how did you get over it? So I would say that I've never really been nervous about sharing my artwork because I'm really selective of what I decide to share with people in the first place. If for whatever reason I had to share everything I drew, with others, and not just the works I handpicked because I like them the best, then I'm sure in that case, I would definitely feel uh, more nervous about sharing. 
But if you are nervous about sharing your artwork, I, I would say remember that there is no pressure to share it at all, actually. And that maybe we feel like we're supposed to share everything we create, but that's not the case. Just focus on enjoying making art. And if you make something you're happy about that you want to show others, then try showing a few close friends first. I'd say that's a safe way to get more confident about sharing your art with people. That is, if that's something you want to do. And their last question is, what's your least favorite type of art style? <sighs> hmm. To be honest, I've always had mixed feelings about hyperrealism. No hate to any hyperrealist artist out there, but I think what makes me not appreciate most hyperrealism I see as much as regular realism or even semi-realism is that it's almost the opposite of the things I personally find appealing about painting, such as playing with the inclusion or omission of certain details, interpreting a subject through your own style, using clever strokes and brushworks, colors and shapes, seeing how you can exaggerate some aspects of reality while keeping others true to life, and the list goes on. Pretty much anything that is not a one-to-one -one copy of a reference. I love how in the styles of painting I like, no two painters will approach the same subject the same way, since each one's goal is to capture what they see in a subject through their style. Whereas hyperrealism, at least as far as I've observed, sort of lacks that component. The only goal appears to be to make the art as accurate as possible to a photo. Like, sure, it's an impressive display of technical skill, but personally, if I were to stop and stare at a piece of art, I'd like to stare at it with the purpose of figuring out how the artist achieved a certain result and not for the purpose of figuring out whether I'm looking at an actual photograph or just a really accurate copy of a photograph. I'm sure it's fun to do though, because I've dabbled in it a few times and I, I find it pretty relaxing. So. There's that at least. The next several questions are from Ilistessa. I hope I'm saying your name right. And there are quite a few, so thank you for that. Uh, the first one is, what are you working on improving the most at the moment? It's hard to say, since I haven't made any improvement goals recently. But something I would really like to improve in general is my creative ability. I'd like to be able to use art as a means of expression and not limit myself to only appealing to aesthetics, which I don't think is a problem, but I would love to try to channel experiences or other thoughts and feelings I have through my art, which isn't really something I do at the moment. Next question is, what parts do you enjoy drawing or painting the most in your work? And what part would you rather skip in your paintings? So I think my favorite part of the painting process is when things begin to take shape. Like the moments in the process where I build up layers of paint or color, or sculpt out shapes and forms or play with edges. It's not one thing really, but that step right after all the messy foundational stuff is out the way, and I begin to see the form of the painting come together, is definitely the most enjoyable stage for me. And for sketching specifically, I'd say the most enjoyable part is capturing the form of the subject I'm drawing, especially when I get to work out shapes and proportions. There's something satisfying about it to me. If there's a step I wish I could skip, however, it's probably when things start to not look how I planned, kind of like what I talked about in my video on the ugly stage. At this point, I either push through and the painting turns out good, or I just accept defeat. But it would be great if I could skip to the fun part, though. Do you draw to tell stories, emotions, or capture a deeper meaning in your art, or for an entirely different reason? I touched on this a bit in my previous response, but I don't really make art for any reason other than enjoyment and aesthetic reasons. Maybe as I develop more, that will change, and I think it'd be cool to express something deeper with my art. But I don't feel like my brain creates any sort of narrative or emotional link to what I create. So right now, I just make art because I enjoy the techniques behind drawing and painting. And using those techniques to make a painting 
or picture that's cool to look at? If your artwork could be published in any way you want, where would you like to see it most? This isn't really something I think about too often, but I think where I'd like my art to appear would be in people's feed online, maybe in some sort of art gallery where people can walk around and see large prints of my work or even clothing or accessories. I'm not sure though. I don't have any commercial aspirations for my art. If someone came along and wanted to use my art somehow in some sort of media production and credit me, I think that'd be cool, but it's not really a dream or anything. Uh, I think I'd also like to have an art book published someday with a curated collection of my paintings and sketches. Do you have specific artists, art movements, or styles that inspire you and maybe directly impact your art and your philosophy on art? This is a pretty good question. Uh, I have a lot of influences in art, but the two biggest inspirations for me are traditional oil painters and digital painters of today. I really love oil painting, particularly a la prima style. So this is something I try to mimic a lot in my artwork. A few painters I look up to are, of course, John Singer Sargent, Andrew Zorn, and Richard Schmidt. I love their approach to oil painting and how they simplify forms and capture their subjects with masterful brushwork and technique. And digital artists that I draw a lot of influence from include Ahmed Alduri, who's probably my single biggest influence over the past few years, Yuming Li, and the atmosphere he creates in his paintings, and Yan Jun Chang's really expressive use of color in her paintings. There are also a handful of painters whose works I first discovered on ArtStation that have affected my style a lot, like Yi Zhang Ke, Huai Shen, and Danny Lai Lai, to name a few. I'm also really influenced by Eliza Ivanova's style of sketching, and I notice her influence on me whenever I sketch in my sketchbook. She actually inspires me to do more sketching traditionally whenever I see her work, and I wish I had even a fraction of her abilities. A huge takeaway I have from all of these artists is that less is more and that you can go a long way with your work by being deliberate about your lines and strokes, simplifying forms into basic shapes, and focusing detail where it matters and leaving it out where it doesn't. This is something I've observed in all of my favorite artists and it's something I try to practice in my own works. And I think my philosophies on art are largely formed by first-hand experiences and realizations I've made about the art process. And sometimes I expand my ideas on art through revelations I hear from other artists in passing and aren't always things I learn or realize looking at their art alone. The next question was asked by two people, so I want to include both of them in this reply. How else do you enjoy spending your time when you're not drawing? And what are your interests and hobbies? For me, it's a bit difficult to find time to do everything I'd like to do, but when I'm not drawing, which is actually pretty often lately since I don't draw as much as I'd like to, I usually spend a fair amount of time playing piano or listening to piano music. I used to do this in my server more often over the past year, but I'm hoping to bring that back in the future. I also like to cook whenever I have time, some other things I like to do besides drawing and painting include composing music, gardening, and baking, but unfortunately, I haven't really been engaging with these hobbies as much as I'd like to lately. Right now, I'm, I'm doing the best I can dealing with adulting stuff to make it so future me has more time to enjoy these other things. Why did you start and continue to draw and paint? I had to think for a while on this question since it's a bit different than the previous questions asking me when and how I began creating art. It's hard for me to say exactly why I began drawing. Since I started as a kid, I had what felt like a natural inclination towards wanting to express or recreate my ideas onto a page. I have no clue where that feeling came from, and the exact reason why I started creating art is a mystery to me right now. 
It's probably so difficult for me to pinpoint any reasoning because there was no reasoning or deliberate decision making when it came to starting art. I know many people decide that they want to learn art or they want to learn how to draw and put in lots of work to learn that skill. But for me, I, I didn't experience it this way. It was merely a thing that happened in my childhood and early teens. Simplest reason I can give as to why I did and still do continue to draw and paint is because I enjoy it. The more I involve myself with this craft, the more my feelings towards it are reaffirmed, even when I spend months away from it. And another reason I continue to create art is because this is something I really want to continue to have as part of my life and even make a living from it. So I'm in it for the long run and I look forward to where art will take me. And the last question from Elistessa is, do you prefer to spend a long amount of time on one piece or are you more likely to move on quickly from drawing to drawing, potentially not even finishing them? I prefer to finish a painting in maybe two to three hour and a half sittings if I can, because I think the longer I spend on a painting, the more I want to move on to the next painting. If I can finish a painting in one sitting, that's amazing. I'll take anything that means I can get to explore another idea or start on a new painting. I don't like being tied to one piece for a long time, but I also don't work on multiple things simultaneously. So if I notice a painting is taking several sessions to finish and it isn't as fun to work on anymore, I'll usually drop it and start something new. I think I value enjoying the whole process more than finishing the paintings. Even though I like to see a painting through to completion, I usually have no issue with deciding to leave a painting I've spent several hours on unfinished if that means I can start something else and have fun working on that instead. Thank you again for all the questions, Elistessa. You did not ask too many. Loopy Art asks two questions about my art influences, and I actually answered the first one at this time stamp on screen, but the second question is really interesting. Do you also think those influences shaped you as a person in some way? I think this question might be a bit too deep for me to sufficiently answer at this point in time. The artist I mentioned previously absolutely shaped and influenced my art and aesthetic tastes, but did they shape me as a person? Maybe? I know I can say Ahmed al Duri's approach to art, at least what I've gathered from viewing his content is very laid back and carefree in a way where he doesn't take the art too seriously and just lets it happen. And I think this outlook shaped the way I approach art and other things in my life that require me to invest a lot of myself into something. Essentially, just loosen up. But I'm not sure of other ways I've been shaped as a person through my art influences. It might be too subtle for me to notice right now. Anjali Zombie asked, Do you use references? And if so, what do you most focus on and take out of them? And what do you like most about drawing people? I do in fact use references, and I try to use them often because they're usually what jumpstarts the process for me. And I try to choose references that I just think are cool. Some things that I think about when looking for references, whether or not I like the colors in a photo, and if I want to capture that, or if I don't care much for the colors, and if the pose or expression or outfit looks nice, I can just be experimental with the colors. Or maybe the lighting in a particular photo is so captivating to me that I can't help but try to recreate it. Or I may see a reference with a really interesting collection of shapes that I want to try my hand at simplifying. There are so many things I look for in a reference, and that varies from painting to painting, reference to reference. And it all comes down to whatever catches my eye and what I might want to challenge myself with on any given day. I want to make a video going more in depth behind the scenes of a painting and share a reference that I'll decide to use and break down what exactly I look for in making a painting out of it. As for what I like most about drawing people, uh, I think I just like drawing faces. I like drawing eyes, skin, hair, shaping those forms. I find that really interesting and enjoyable. And I also like capturing subtle expressions, nothing too overt, like happiness or sadness or anything like that, 
but just the subtlety in a person's gaze. I enjoy trying to capture those little details. And I think that's a big reason why I keep painting people and faces. David Gershom asked two questions. First, how long do you spend on a painting on average? I kind of touched on this in the previous question, but I would say for a painting, I would deem fully complete maybe anywhere between three to eight hours. But I usually work on a painting here and there over the course of a few days. And for quicker paintings, I'll say about an hour and a half to two hours. And their second question is, are you a portrait artist or a concept artist? I'm not sure I'd consider myself to be either. I'm definitely not a concept artist. And even though I tend to do a lot of portraits for fun, I wouldn't say I'm a portrait artist either. If I ever have to categorize myself, I usually just say that I'm an illustrator or a digital painter. L Doodles asked, what is your progress goal in your art journey? I think for me, my art journey includes my career and life goals, and that's to forge a future for myself that is centered around exercising and displaying creativity and helping people in the process. Art is fun. I want to make a living doing what I enjoy. So my goal with art is to make that happen and grow a community along the way. And last but not least, Basket asked, do you like art? Yes, I like art. And uh, yeah, that's all of them. Sorry if I missed or didn't include everyone's questions. So many questions had a lot of overlap. So I hope I at least answered most things that were asked, even if I didn't address you directly. Uh, once again, thanks a ton for the questions. I hope to do this again in the future. And thank you for your patience while I took my time working on this. Make sure you leave a like on this video if you found it useful and also subscribe while you're at it. I'd be very grateful for that. And if you're not already in my server, make sure you join it so you don't miss any news updates or events that I might hold in a voice chat there. Uh, come post your art there and meet some cool people. Okay, that's it. Uh, thank you for watching or listening. Thank you for 1000 subscribers. That's so epic. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.